All right, so for the for Disturbed out here on these big stages, this is uh, pretty much where all my sound comes from. It's, it's, it's the bass, of course, and then um, we go through this great pedal board that was put together by Bestronics out of Chicago. Um, I use the, uh, this is a new Shure uh, wireless. Really awesome, instead of being in a rack off the stage, it's actually on my pedal board right here. Um, and it actually has a tuner built into it, so, uh, and a mute, so that's great. I have an additional tuner here that runs the whole show as well. Um, so, you know, tuning is like super important. So I, I always have access to that, whether it's while I'm playing or whether I need to mute it or not. So from the wireless, I go into this uh, pedal switcher. And basically, all I use it for is just to split. Uh, we split A and B. The A goes through um, this that I use as an effect sparingly. It's a distortion. Uh, I use it mostly for a little distortion pedal effect. And then the chorus pedal, which on this tour, I'm not using it, but I have before. So the A, and this is my clean tone. And it goes into a clean DI and out. And like I said, this distortion, I only use it for one song, just for one little section as an effect. But the rest of the time, this, these are being bypassed and it goes into the clean and it's just the, the raw tone straight out of the, out of the Spectre bass. And then the B side goes through this a beautiful, awesome pedal right here uh, by EBS. I've been working with EBS for a lot of years um, and they recently came out with this Billy Sheehan signature distortion pedal. This thing is badass. I can't say enough about it. Um, so the B side goes into here and out of the other DI. So basically, I have two tones running the entire show. A clean, which has, in my opinion, that the clean tone has that real solid low end, um, non-distorted, just clean and round and, and, and punchy. And then uh, I have a distortion tone that goes the whole time that has more of the mid-range uh, push. Um, and then I leave it to my sound man out front to kind of dial in the mix. Usually it's about 50-50. And that's it, man. And, uh, you know, honestly, using this, um, I use hard key amps, but if I'm in a situation where we're doing a fly date, I don't even need an amp. I can actually just use this for all my processing power and a bass, pull off the show anywhere in the world. This is the main Spectre bass I use as the workhorse for the show. Okay, so I got this one from Spectre. It actually came from the factory with one of these already built in, the, the uh, Hipshot Detuner, which I use right in the middle of the show. Um, this one has actually a, a different wiring harness than uh, most inspectors that come out. I don't know why I got so special that they sent this one to me, but it was just decked out. Awesome instrument. I probably play about 60% of the show on this instrument. Uh, now, the Disturb show, we got a lot of different tunings. So, I had Spectre send me out another one. And they sent me this orange tiger beast out. This is just the standard Euro XL. Nothing special about it. Still sounds amazing. Um, and we have this one in the drop tuning already. It doesn't have the hip shot because I don't have to go through uh, going through standard into regular. So this one's tuned down to a C. Um, you tune down to the C's, you can see the, the saddles. The Spectres really hold the, the low tunings well and the intonation well. Because on a lot of other instruments, when you start going down to like C's, uh, or, or you know even lower than that you'll see these bridges are pulled all the way back trying to maintain intonation and you can see these specter bridges there's still room to uh, to make sure that the intonation is spot on which everywhere we play you know we're in a different environment every day different temperatures different uh, humidity factors so you know sometimes that stuff gets changed on the fly and then uh, pretty much the rest of these are backups I have another black one so, as I was saying I love these bases so much that we have a couple songs where we're doing an open B. Now, for people who are bass players, bass players know that when you're talking B, you're talking five string. Only that is not what I wanted to do. I love these four string euros so much that I basically have this one strung with five string, with a five string gauge, only it's a very thin five string gauge so as not to push too much stress on the, on the instrument. It was an experiment to see if it would work. And as you can see, the, the action is still very low. Um, this uh, smaller gauge fits into the saddle just fine, and it's working great. So this is actually a, uh, let's see what's the tuning on this. It's an open B, so it's a B, F sharp, B, and E. Um, totally unique tuning that, that we do uh, for a couple of songs off the new record, um, The Light and The Vengeful One. Um, it's our first record where we actually had those open Bs.
But you know, Dan Donegan, our guitar player, he likes to experiment. So another tuning. So you know, it just added on yet another bass. And and uh, but the guys at Spectre have been so good to me. You know, talking to them, they really worked with me to make sure that I had what I needed out here. Um, so the, it, well, I don't know if this counts or not. I know uh, Spectre's my main gig, but. For Sound of Silence, I'm actually playing acoustic guitar. So uh, I've been working with uh, the guys over at Ovation. They sent me this, and um, I also use their acoustic basses as well. Um, but the Sound of Silence song doesn't have bass on it. Uh, and when we do that song, uh, we bring out a piano. We have some string players who are actually up here right now getting ready to sound check. And uh, I play guitar on that one. So there you go, there's a little, little breakdown. And then any other instruments are just back up. Well, my, my first band was called Soak. We were on Interscope Records, and that was uh, 97, 98. And then I joined Union Underground in 2000, and then um, 2004, I joined Disturbed. Uh, still in Disturbed, but since then, uh, did some other projects, uh, Art of Anarchy with the late Scott Weiland. Um, and then I also work with Operation Mindcrime, which is Jeff Tate's new project that he has now that he's not with uh, Queensryche anymore. And you know, and I also, I guess I forgot, I also did Adrenaline Mob with Mike Portnoy, uh, Mike Orlando, and Russell Allen, which, uh, even though that project's not currently doing anything now, you never know, we might get back together in the future. Sometimes it gets overwhelming, and sometimes I do like to take breaks. <laughs> I would like to take a break, and I don't always have the opportunity to do so. That's pretty much how it is now for most musicians. You gotta, you know, play in multiple projects or do stuff that's beyond I like producing though. I like working with young bands. Um, last year, I think I produced uh, seven different projects. Um, and then I did the math the other day. In, in the past three years, uh, I've produced um, 67 songs for uh, about eight or nine different bands. Um, and it's really fortunate. I, I like working with, with new bands and new artists. And uh, when it comes to producing, I don't try to tell them how to do it. I try to, like this is what I tell bands. They don't go through my process, I go through their process. So, so I figure out what makes them special, um, what's the best way to make them sound like whoever they are. Because that chemistry is so important. And I don't want to come in and, and displace that chemistry or tell them how I think they should do it. I tell them, this is what you're doing that's good. Let's make the most of that. So every project I do, I learn something new. You know, and, and uh, not only do the bands I work with learn from me, but like, like I said, I, I, I get a lot out of it. I, yeah, pretty much every time I do one of these, pro every time I go and record a band, I take a Spectre with me. I mean, that's the, that's the reality of it, you know, and they bring in their bass and I go, yeah, let's listen to your bass. Now let's listen to mine. And every time my Spectres get used on every recording I do. So there is that. <laughs>